Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zagly, back bringing you some more NBA news. Hope you're all having a fantastic day, but you guys already know that we got a lot to talk about today, so let's not waste any more time. Let's just get into it. Lego. First up in the news, when discussing the futures of up and coming teams in the NBA, there are a number of them that do come to mind. The Sacramento Kings, the Atlanta Hawks, the Chicago Bulls, hopefully the Phoenix Suns start to improve. AKA, there are just numerous teams out there that have plenty of young pieces already and are about to head to the lottery once again after missing the playoffs this season to even further improve their roster. However, according to multiple people around the NBA within the NBA, there is one team out there that stands above the rest in terms of how good they will be even though they miss the playoffs this year. There's a team out there that has the brightest future overall. As we got a survey out last night that said people around the league believe the Dallas Mavericks have the brightest future out of any NBA lottery team this year. This poll was ran by The Athletic as they polled a dozen league executives, coaches, and scouts asking them to rank teams that are going to miss the playoffs that had the brightest futures and here were the results. In first place, of course, of course, you have the Dallas Mavericks receiving a total of five first place votes, followed by the Sacramento Kings, the Atlanta Hawks, Chicago Bulls, Los Angeles Lakers, the Knicks, the Magic, the Wolves, and then finally, the Phoenix Suns. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I do agree with the Dallas Mavericks personally, but the order of the other teams was a bit strange. I don't know if that's the order that I will put them in. I especially don't know if I will put Phoenix last since they do have Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton, but I guess people around the league just don't have confidence or faith in the Phoenix Suns and their player development program, nor their coaches, their GM, or their owner. As for their reasoning for selecting the Dallas Mavericks as the number one up and coming team, one Western Conference scout said that they already have their franchise player in Luka Doncic. They have Kristaps Porzingis ready to come back next year, and they should have some money to bring in someone in free agency. Plus, Rick Carlisle is one of the brightest coaches in the league. And then an assistant coach on a Western Conference team said, Luka is really good, and they've proven that they're willing to do whatever it takes financially to win. That kid Jalen Brunson is a winner. Players tend to get better in their player development program. So they got Luka, they got Porzingis, they got a great coach, they have a good player development program, and they're going to have money to spend in the offseason to bring in another big name this summer. It, it would take a lot, like a heck of a lot, in order for this to go wrong for the Dallas Mavericks. Next up though, Anthony Davis is in the news, and I haven't talked about Anthony Davis a lot on this channel ever since the New Orleans Pelicans decided to keep him past the NBA trade deadline. He still hasn't been playing a lot for the Pelicans in their games because they want to make sure that he's rested and stays healthy as to not damage his trade daily because if something happened to Anthony Davis, that would be detrimental to the entire New Orleans Pelicans organization. And with that being said, even though Anthony Davis didn't play a single minute in the Pelicans loss to the Charlotte Hornets the other night, he still uh, got into it a a little bit with a fan as we got a video out of Anthony Davis flipping the bird, the middle finger, to a fan on his way back to the tunnels after the game. <laughs> And of course, Davis has since been fined $15,000 by the NBA for flipping the bird to an NBA fan. However, Anthony Davis says that he was provoked and he even went as far as to slide into the DMs of a Pelicans fan account to prove his point, saying, first of all, little homie, you don't know what happened and why I did that. Some fan disrespected me, saying something I didn't like. Also saying that he meant no disrespect towards the city and that he never will disrespect the city, but he is frustrated that the video only showed him giving the fan the finger and not showing what the fan said. I think player fan relationships is something that the NBA front office, that the executives like Adam Silver is definitely going to have to look at this summer because I don't know what it's been this year, but more so than ever, we've seen fans and players getting into it. And the end result is often players coming away with these fines, having to pay because they had to defend themselves from an NBA fan. So something does need to be done here to kind of protect the players and 
honestly speaking, their wallet. Because I'm sure players hear smack talk from fans all the time. Every game, some fan on the sidelines, some fan near the tunnel is gonna be talking trash to these NBA players. And the players might try their best to ignore it or just shrug it off because just some fan in the stands, but eventually it's gonna keep chipping away at you until you become so annoyed that you feel like you have to respond in a way that Anthony Davis or any of the other players have done so far this season. There's only so much you can take before you snap. And it's not their players' fault, it's the fault of the fans. Actually, I'm not even gonna call them fans anymore. It's the fault of the idiots in the stands and on the sidelines that be doing dumb stuff to get these players agitated. Those idiots are the problem. For our next bit of news, we all know that Draymond Green and Kevin Durant have a very interesting relationship. They claim that they're friends, however, ever since Kevin Durant went to the Golden State Warriors, they've had a few run-ins that resulted in the two of them not talking to each other, kind of bickering amongst each other. And that could just be the type of friendship that they have where they feel comfortable telling each other anything, being comfortable enough to point out when the other person messes up, but what Draymond Green just did might have crossed the line no matter how much of a friend you might be to someone else. Okay, so Draymond Green recently went on a new and upcoming podcast. And in this podcast, he started talking about players who are trying to recreate the success that LeBron James has had business-wise, both on and off the basketball court. Players who essentially like to copy LeBron James. And he never mentioned any players, especially not Kevin Durant by name in this part of the video. But in this video, it does show that Kevin Durant has definitely copied his fair share of what LeBron has done both on and off the basketball court. Like, blow for blow, punch for punch, Kevin Durant has tried to become LeBron James, it seems. He's laid out such a blueprint for guys like myself and, and everybody. Like, he laid the blueprint out, and I think so many people are afraid to say they try to follow it. Like, so many people make a mistake trying to, like, mimic what Brian and yourself and Mav and Rich and Randy and all y'all have accomplished. People make mistakes, like trying to mimic it with a twist. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna do that, that they did, but we're gonna add this twist to say it's our idea. And that twist completely fucked the idea <laughs> up. As opposed to just saying, it worked. Yeah. like. And Why not do it? Like I said, Draymond in that part never mentioned anyone specifically. The last thing he'd want to do was call anyone out by name. And even if he wasn't inferring to Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant still most definitely falls into the camp of players that Draymond Green was referring to here. And I don't think there's any way that Draymond couldn't have known that he was subliminally even talking about Kevin Durant, even if he didn't mean to throw KD under the bus like this. But I just never realized how much Kevin Durant has actually copied LeBron James, even opening up or investing in his own pizza chain like LeBron invested into Blaze Pizza many years back. Speaking of Blaze Pizza, why does that sound super good right now? Speaking of LeBron though, we have to talk about him now and his newest off the court business venture, AKA Space Jam 2. Yes, the movie has been officially announced a couple of months ago and it's gonna be coming out in 2021. So we still got a couple more years, even though this movie's been being talked about for the longest time, it seems. Good news for LeBron though, is that since the Lakers aren't gonna be the playoffs, he'll have even more time to work on the movie as the filming for Space Jam 2 is set to take place this summer. And that's where the bad news comes in. As with the filming of Space Jam 2 set to take place this summer, LeBron James still hasn't been able to get other star players in the league to be in the movie with him. And this report comes to us from ESPN insider, Brian. Ryan Windhorst, who said, in all honesty, he's been recruiting players to come and try and be in Space Jam with him this summer, and he hasn't been able to close any of the deals. Some of the top guys he wants to come and be with him in the movie are saying, you want to put me in a movie where you're the star, and I'm the one you're going to be dunking on. That's a good point. I don't know how many star players would sign up to be dunked on. I don't know if Giannis would, Curry would, KD would, Embiid would, Harden would, Westbrook would, Paul George. I, I can't think of any of those guys that would just want to be dunked on by LeBron James. And that's why I think LeBron should go after a guy like, you know, Timothy Mozgov or Aaron Baines. He used to get dunked on a lot. Brandon Knight 
call up Jason Terry. You ended his career once upon a time. There are guys out there who have plenty of experiences with being dunked on. You could even call up me if you wanted to. I'd be in your movie, you pay me enough. And lastly for the day, this just makes me want the playoffs to start already even more. Like this season has seemingly been dragging on for so long, especially the end of it. Like the Western Conference is pretty much already decided except for the seeding, but we already know the eight teams that are gonna be making the playoffs. And in the Eastern Conference, all we have to find out is which team is going to get swept by the Milwaukee Bucks in the first round. So I really think the playoffs should be starting like tomorrow, but we still got a few more games left to go and the playoffs won't start for another week or two. So it's needs to happen already this end of the season is dragging on way too much that being said though we did have a really good game that went down yesterday between the milwaukee bucks and the philadelphia 76ers and this game got heated very quickly as three minutes into this game eric bledsoe actually got ejected for chucking the ball at joel and b defense in fact they have like better than 30 points for first quarter oh there is not a from downtown Oh, look out! Let's say. And I'm not sure who took that first swing. You can literally hear the thud when the ball hit and beat. And like I said, Bledsoe was ejected for this, but it still didn't matter. As the Bucks still wound up getting the win off a 45 point, 13 rebound, 6 assists, and 5 block game from Giannis Anadokounmpo. That though was going to do it for everything that we gotta talk about today. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. And if you did, go ahead and destroy Enjoy that like button as well as make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Now though, I do have to give a quick shout out to another fellow NBA YouTuber who goes by the name of Rusty Buckets. The man recently uploaded a four part series on the greatest players to ever play the game. And I can tell that he really put a heck of a lot of hard work into it. So I wanted to give him a shout out for the work that he did put in. And I'll have the link to his channel if you guys do want to check him out and the videos that he makes. That being said though, you guys already know that you are the real MVPs and until until next time, keep getting the buckets to my CC, and I'm out of here. Peace!